Things are all out of the room, ma'am. Oh, thank you, John. You better remind Hilda there'll be two more for dinner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Douglas. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready. Isn't anybody going out? Oh, no, Doug. We mustn't gang up on her. Dance is the slightest shock or excitement. You... moment always. This wonderful house and Dan's own people. Aunt Martha, I'd have known you anywhere. We look forward to this for a long time. Thank you, Aunt Martha. Anne, I hope we're going to be very good friends. I hope more. Family. That's a wonderful part of it. I never really had one. You can't be Douglas. My name is Hackett, friend of the family. How do you do? How do you do? This is Douglas. Dan's big brother. Hello, Evelyn. We hope you're going to like us. I don't see how I could help it. This house. Why are people so good to me? Hilda. Hello, Hilda and John. How'd you do, Miss? How do you do? <sighs> Miriam Blake. Yes. You're Douglas Noggy. That's right, Miss Heath. Please call me Evelyn. Miriam. Evelyn. I knew there was someone missing. Little Lee. How are you, Lee? I didn't expect to see such a pretty little girl. You're so beautiful. You're so fly. No, they don't touch me. I've been on that dirty train. And could I go upstairs? Oh, yes, of course. You must be very tired. It's not that. It's just that I've dreamed of all this for so long. I told myself I wouldn't act like a fool and go to pieces. That's all right, dear. Just come with me. I'm very sorry we don't have a bedroom for you on the first floor. It's all right, Anne. Well, isn't anybody going to say hello to me? Well, Dan, dear, how are you? We didn't expect you until eight. No, we took an early train. Uh, Evelyn's father, you know. Uh, you know, Dan, I saw Bernhardt make an entrance like that once. This gave me the same lump in my throat. 
Oh, Hagen. <laughs> you hard-bitten old cynic, you never had a lump. <laughs> Just a time for a drink anyway, Dan. How are you, Doug? Yeah, that tray. Oh. oh, you don't any of you know. This is probably the first time in her life she's ever been in a nice house with nice people. Well, if it isn't a girl who was hanging from a cliff, page 64, last month's cosmopolitan. Hello, Dan. Hey, how'd you come out? Were you rescued? This month on page 54. <laughs> Is there anything else to come from the station, ma'am? That's all there is, I'm afraid. Thank you, John. You're welcome, ma'am. I put fresh paper in the drawer. Mr. Hackett just moved out. Oh? Did he have this room? Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Would you mind terribly if I asked Hilda to fumigate in here? Well, well if you like it. Oh, I hardly think you'd catch anything from Ernest, except maybe a grumpy disposition. I know it seems silly. But when you're sick, you know, it gets so you watch everything. I'll speak to Hilda, dear. Don't bother about it now. Oh, Anne! A phonograph! I used to have one, you know. Not electric, though. Can I play it? Of course. It's yours now. For the whole summer? For as long as you like. Look, Anne. Liebestraum. Dream of love. It was always my favorite. Till Papa broke it. You mean he broke it purposely? He wasn't always himself. I love it, too. You know, Douglas always believed that no woman could resist it. He was right. Night and day. You know, when you lie alone and wait and hope somebody will come and see you, if you have music, it's not so bad. That's why Mr. Hackett wanted you to have it. That's very sweet. Is there anything else you'd want now? No, thank you, Anne. Plan to eat early, so you won't be too long, will you? No, I won't, Anne. You no, know, I'd feel much better, darling, if you'd lock that door. Suppose someone sleepwalks and sees us. Who cares? I'm no clod hopper, you know. Oh, I wish someone would see us. Get this. Oh. Oh, get possible. There's only one thing wrong. And take your slippers off. Oh, no. Take them off. I got mine off. It's wonderful. I've always wanted to dance with my bare feet. Go on, try it. Well, all right. Take it away, 
Take Skipper away. Put him outside somewhere. Come on, Lee, darling. We'll put him out in the hothouse. I'll go with her, Annie. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, she's gonna die. Miriam, get Dan, sweetheart. He'll know what to do. I'll keep him out. Quiet her down. There, there. It's only a tiny bird. It couldn't hurt anybody. Please don't talk to me about birds. Even the word makes me crawl with loathing. It's a cold terror. Horrible, horrifying feeling. It's awful, isn't it? I can't help it. Of course you can't. Don't even try to. We'll keep Skipper out of your way. Ever since I was a little girl. I can't explain it. Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. You still haven't told me why she yells. Because, dear, birds frighten her. It's what they call a phobia. What's that? Can you catch it like chicken pox? <laughs> no, darling. A phobia is an exaggerated fear. You're afraid of snakes, aren't you? I never saw one. But I'm not afraid of birds. Well, some people are. Others are afraid of cats and bats. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sometimes scared of the dark. That's right. There's no real reason to be afraid of the dark, but you are. Now, that's the best way I can explain it. Poor Skipper. He was scared, too, when she yelled. Good night. Don't! Don't, Douglas, don't! I'm just opening the window to get a little air in here. I don't want you to. Don't you see them? Those leaves there. In the moonlight, they look like birds trying to get in. I was lying here thinking about it. That's what scared me so when she came in. Look, that's first-class moonlight. Don't you think bad things about it. There, now. Isn't that nice? See? That doesn't look like a bird, does it? Hold it. It's all right, dear. You'll be yourself again in a moment. I'm so sorry, everybody. Here. Now you just drink this. Dan? Tell them I don't do this very often. I'm so ashamed. Don't you even think about it. Dan, you know you've got a hat you'll have to get rid of. I don't mind fluttering. Oh, it's horrible. I can't. <laughs> Doug, I think we better leave Evelyn to her doctor. Of course. Good night now. Good night. You better go on to bed, dear. I want to talk to Dan. more wandering around in the middle of the night for you, young lady. Come on. I'll see that she gets to bed. Do you have a phobia too, Daddy? Yes. What's Daddy's a phobia? Tell her. You. <laughs> you scared of me? Now and then, yes. But don't let it worry you. Good night. Daddy? No, not until you get some more to pick there. <laughs> Quiet you down. I am quiet, Dan. I don't want it now. All right, sweetheart. Right there on the table if you do want it. Please leave the door open. Look, Dan. I don't doubt that you'll wind up a medical sensation someday, but no offense, Dan, but don't you think with a girl as nervous as that, we ought to call in a specialist? Brought her from a specialist. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, Dr. Darian. Rest, change, you know, emotional excitement. That's the main thing. Well, we'll try not to let things like that happen again. Don't worry about it. Please. 
Well, can I show my favorite girl home? You don't need to, but I'd like it. Good night, Doug. Good night. What's the family council decide? We decided that curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> Evelyn, you shouldn't be up. I'll never get to sleep now. Yes, you will. All anybody needs to go to sleep is to have a pretty picture in mind. I don't know any pretty pictures. I'll show you one. What are you doing? Wait. I'll show you how you're going to look after a couple of weeks here. manage a smile, could you? No? All right, but it'll be there. And after a while, maybe even a dimple. No more shadows under those eyes. Up goes that head. You know, you're terribly hunched over. We'll fix that, too. And that sick walk of yours, you'll get over that, too. Back go those shoulders. Pure body lines to match that beautiful face. There. Isn't that a pretty picture? Trouble with me is I always have to remodel everything. You'll help me. Good. And now to sleep. The only thing that's missing, infant, is a nice big teddy bear. Good night. Good night. Close the door now, if you want. That's a girl. Bronson turned me over to Dr. Dan Proctor. I'm furious. He's just an intern. What good does he think he can do me? I'll be in this wheelchair forever. I know it. I know it. Dr. Proctor's in love with me. Already I'm so sick of his Aunt Martha. Who wants to hear about an old maid? Like I'm liable to be. Why can't I have love like other girls? Why must my heart be weak? To know that any moment it may stop beating. Why can't I be well? <laughs> I had fun today. I pretended to Dan that someone else was in love with me. I made up a name. Kenneth Harmon. I bet Dan's not sleeping tonight. I wrote Dan today. I copied some of it out of a book. Letter from Elizabeth Brown. She was sick, too. Yet she got married. I'll marry, too, someday. Not Dan. He's too easy. Why is it I like to control people? Yet when I do, I hate them. Sometimes I wish I was dead. Last night, I got so mad at myself, I cut myself perfectly. I wonder what it's like to die. Or to kill someone. Today, I decided I loved Dan. I promised him I'd be good. And we'd start over. He said in nice surroundings, I'll get well. We're going to Maine. Today, I think I met the man I really wanted. Oh, excuse me. 
Somebody's ringing. I'm not safe, Mr. Proctor. She wants a prune juice. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Dad. You missed out on the waffles. Oh, uh, well, I want some toast and coffee. There you are, Tilly. Little job waiter. Oh, it's lovely for Evelyn. There'll be another chair at the table as soon as you get that on, Dan. The only thing that keeps her in her room is that old wrapper of hers. Yeah, I hope you're right, Dad. Quite an expert on women's vanity, aren't you? That's one thing I do know about. <laughs> Lee here won't go to dancing school if you put a couple of hair ribbons on her. Then she can't afford to stay away. Right, Angel Puss? Can I go over to Jimmy Peters? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hey, how about some coffee? Oh, Hilda, Mr. Proctor would like some coffee, please. Mrs. Proctor, somebody's got to wait on that poor girl. She didn't feel like her prune juice this morning. She'd rather have milk, hot, but not boiled, because boiling kills the vitamins. Dr. Dan knows. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do for you. <laughs> By all means, if a negligee will get Evelyn out of that room, let's make it. Hilda will be killing herself. I'll get the material this afternoon. Somebody want coffee? Yeah, right here. I think it'd be much prettier in white. That's why you're wrong. Dark, soft, and velvety. I've been pumping her. Right by you, Dan. Anything that doesn't remind her of hospitals. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I expected coffee. So did I. Sorry, I'm very sorry. Yeah, but I'll get some over at the end. Who's playing who today? Oh, we'll take them on, Chad. It'll be a massacre. Coming along to watch it, Danny? Uh, later, maybe. Thanks, sir. Get along. Hey, <laughs> Before long, we'll even get her into a tennis outfit. Then you can take her to the inn with the others. At least to watch. Hmm? Sure, Aunt Martha, sure. And we'll see to that, won't we? Mm -hmm. I'll get this to the dressmaker. You know it's perfect. You just want to hear it again. <laughs> Shall I stay with her? I'd like to. Now she'll be all right. Your dad will be back from the beach directly. Miss Proctor, I just hope nobody will tell the minister you were sewing on the Sabbath. Oh, Hilda, I hope nobody will. myself a trip. Well. Douglas. I could have won all bets. Go on up. Stop. Turn around. Now come on down. You like it? Better on this one than with the one you did for Anne. Oh, 
Did he design one for her, too? Oh, he dresses everyone in this house except me. Me, he undresses. <laughs> oh, I'll be ready in a minute. Which are the shoes? Oh, just my old slippers. Oh, they won't do at all. I'll have to speak to Anne. Douglas, you've made me so happy. You know, you've given me an idea. When I get really fed up with this work I'm doing, I think I'll go into the dress business and make millions. Does it really look all right on me? I never dreamed of having anything like this. Maybe that's why you never got it. You know, you've got to dream to get things. Yes, Douglas. I'm ready, maestro, whenever the fashion show is over. Okay. Well, I'll be glad when this series is finished. Now you sit right down here and look glamorous. I'm sure Dan will be along in a minute. You ready? Just as soon as I change clothes. Dan? Oh, I wanted you to come down, Evelyn. I told you I would if I felt all right. Oh, this color in your cheeks, you're beautiful. Dan, would we ever have a house like this? I'll give you everything I can. A house like this? Well, it depends on how many appendixes I take out, but eventually we could manage it. Dan, aren't you ever afraid I might get so beautiful you'd be jealous of me? I don't think so. Bet you would. I know how you are. Let's not start that again. I was only teasing. I bet you would. Suppose I was unfaithful. Suppose I only wanted to be unfaithful. And you caught me sending a note to someone. Well, I asked you not to talk like this. It's only making believe. What's the harm in that? Suppose I ask you to take the note to him. I wouldn't stand for it. There, you see? You are jealous. I told you I'll never be happy with you. Never. Oh, Evelyn, dear, please. It's been like this all the time. Remember Kenneth Harmon? And now my first day of you tell me how jealous you're going to be. Evelyn, stop it, dear. Stop it. You started this. I only want to see how much you love me. I was only teasing. All right. Of course you were. All right, dear. Dan, why do we always have to quarrel like this? I don't know, Evelyn. I wish we didn't. I guess it's because we need each other so much. Have to wait so long. I guess that's it. Oh, I can't stand this like it is. I haven't strength. Always these quarrels. I ought to go back. That's where I belong. See what happens the first thing. I only wanted to please you. What do you want to do? I don't know. You said it would be different here. But it's not, really. Not with us still like this. Maybe if you went away for a little while. Could not see you? Till I got really better. You said I looked better. Maybe if we didn't have these setbacks. Maybe after another month or two. And then when you came back, I'd really be standing there waiting for you. I'd come to the end of the walk to meet you. I'd run to meet you. You want me to go? All right, then. Stay if you like. I just thought, I know the hospital needs you. And the sooner you get through there, the sooner we can be on our own. But you do as you see best. Only I'm tired. You're going upstairs. Help 
me up. Evelyn. Will you write me every day? I'll write you twice a day. I'll think of you every minute. I'll leave this afternoon before I change my mind. Carry me upstairs, Dan. Then you can go and pack. because I want that new starch you told me about. Yes, darling. Put me down here, Dan. So I can watch you go. I'll let you know about the train. Yes, Dan. I've been in an artist studio before. Would I bother you too much? I can give you two minutes anyway. I saw the sign outside. I didn't know whether... Pretty good equipment, don't you think? How do you like her? Hey, can I take a rest? Yeah, sure. Show me a cigarette, will you? You make her very beautiful. I had a lot to start with. Until I found her, I'd use two different models. How do you mean? One from the neck down, another from the neck up. But Miriam's got it both ways, right, Miriam? I didn't know you cared, darling. Hey, match? You'll have to wait till I get some. Just uh, show Evelyn around, will you? Well, you can see for yourself. Over there is the stuff from a book he did. That whole shelf is his art with the capital A period. Then over here is What's that one? That, oh, that's a sketch of St. Cecilia. He promised a mural for the church. Why didn't he do it? You just don't whip off murals, honey. Not when you've got deadlines for things like this. Is it very difficult to pose? Oh, with three bucks an hour, it's not too difficult. Did you ever have to pose like this? That's me, at five an hour. That's not too bad, either. I think I'd rather die than do that. Oh, you're kidding. You tell Douglas I'll be in some other time. Douglas, I'm tired. I think I'll go to my room. There, you see, you're overdoing it your first day up. That's it, I guess. There you are. What's the matter with you? You should have heard her skipping me the business because I posed that way for you. What'd you expect? She thought you were a nice girl. Just a minute. Ah, be yourself. She's never come up against that sort of thing. Well, they've got statues in parks, haven't they? Ah, forget it. Okay. Only Dan had better be careful. He's likely to find himself married to something in armor. Just let Dan worry about his problems. You know, modesty looks very nice on the right people. All right, I'm squelched. What are you doing? No, oh, nothing. Miss Modesty, huh? Remember me? Me, giving my all. <laughs> Douglas, 
wonder if Becca sees it. I think she thinks about it. I can tell in her expression. She likes it. One day it looks at me as a woman, not a model. I can't let that day come. I can't. I can get rid of her. I'm mad. How can I? How can I make her go away? How can I do that? Close the door and sit by me. Are you all right? Mm -hmm. Why did you turn off the music? You can put it on again if you like. Can I? Mr. Hackett would never let me touch it when it was his. You can play it any time you like. Does it make you think of things? It does me. You know the name of it? Lieberstrom. Trial means dream, and Lieber means love. Dream of love. It's very pretty, but you play it all the time. Listen to it. Here you are dreaming. You're waiting for someone. A man, a handsome prince. Just now you won't understand, but you will. You'll know. You'll be kind like your father. You love your father, don't you, Lee? My daddy? You love to feel his arms around you, don't you? <laughs> you wouldn't want someone bad to take him away from you, would you? Mm-mm. Are you old enough to keep a secret? If I tell you one. Come here, closer. Oh, Doug, I've got to rest. I'll roll this way. All right, walk around a little bit. If I can. Oh. Don't happen to have any horse liniments, do you? Or a good chiropractic trick up your sleeve. No, but I got a good one for the back. Oh, yeah, that'll get do up, it. Though. Okay. That'll help. Oh. <laughs> yeah, put your hands back here, Nick. Oh. Oh. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Oh. No, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Oh. Better. Oh. No. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me try it on you. No, I don't need it. Sit down, relax. Lee, what are you doing up there? Lee, what's the matter? Hilda wants you. Lee. Oh, what's there something wrong? <laughs> Lee. Lee Proctor. I wouldn't go after her if I were you. Well, I certainly won't. She don't want this. It's just her bad luck. Here you are. I don't feel much like it myself right now. Hilda, I just saw Lee up in the apple tree. Well, no wonder she looks sick. Those apples ain't right. It wasn't apples. It was something she saw in the studio. You know what I told you about artists? When we first came here, there were an unquestioned lot and always had been. John, you be careful what you say about Mr. Proctor. He's a fine man. A man is only as good as the woman he's with. I'm saying that Lee saw something up there. What do you expect? The two of them up there, closeted day after day, and that girl half-dressed all the time? You're absolutely wrong. Anyway, I think I'll just go out and comfort her. You can just have a real piece of this cake. Poor little lamb. John, don't you dare climb up in that tree. <laughs> don't you feel well, sweetie? Not very. Look what I brought you. I don't want any. Lee, did you eat any apples up in that tree? No. You must have. You don't look very well. What is it, darling? I can't tell you. Why does the farmer come? Why doesn't she? She went to see her Uncle Danoff and Mr. Hackett. Tell Hilda what happened, please. Go away. I can't. Maybe you'd like some cake first, and then you'd feel better. 
I don't care if I ever eat again. Lee, was it something about Miss Blake and your daddy? <laughs> It's warm enough for a nice cold drink, don't you think, Evelyn? We could have it right out here. Yes, I'll tell Hilda. I'll go. Hilda, you're wanted on the porch. Would it be awfully silly if I went up right away and wrote Dan? Well, not silly to Dan, I'm sure. He'd love it. Sure you don't want something to drink, dear? No, thank you. Poor darling. I feel so sorry for her. She had the saddest look in her eyes when Dan left. Well, it's good rehearsal. When you're married to a doctor, you're saying quick goodbyes at all hours. Sometimes I complain about Doug, but I guess I'm really lucky. I'll get the ice, dear. Oh, would you? I'll see what I can do about Doug. Hilda! Excuse me, ma'am. Just a minute. That's one thing I won't tolerate in my house. But I don't think you understand me. That that's a cheap chambermaid trick, and I won't stand for it. If you'll just let me go, please, ma'am. I'll let you go for good if I ever catch you doing a thing like that again. I'm surprised at you. I thought I knew you better than that. Well, haven't you anything to say for yourself? No, ma'am. I just looked. I thought someone ought to look in there now and then. They're in there so long sometimes, Miss Proctor. Well, of course they are. They're working. Hilda! Is anything wrong? Hilda just made a very stupid mistake. I'm sure she's sorry. <laughs> Anne, I can't stand to see you look like that. What did she do? Nothing. It's all right, really. I'm sorry. I just lost my temper. I got it out of her, all right. Oh, the poor little dear. But the terrible thing is, I tried to look in the studio, too, and Miss Proctor caught me, and you think I was dirt under her feet? Call me a cheap chambermaid, and her blind to that blonde thing right under her very nose. John, there are things going on up there, and I can't stay in this house and face that poor Miss Proctor and me knowing it, and that's the truth of it. <laughs> My gossip that starts in the kitchen can be a very dangerous thing, Hilda. It didn't start in the kitchen, Miss Proctor. But now if you're going to fall me out, I can't leave soon enough. <laughs> it wasn't me who saw it first, if you must know. I know only what I see and hear myself. But I did see, Miss Proctor. And heard, too. Plenty. And all this time, Miss Proctor being so nice to that girl here. Of course, I don't blame him so much. After all, like John said, him being an artist. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard, Hilda. We all know Douglas too well. And if you've any loyalty, you won't think about this again. And above all, don't say anything to Mrs. Proctor about it. Yes, Miss Proctor. Did you decide to have your drinks here, do you? Oh, uh, oh it is a little cold out there, I guess. It in fact, I think I'll go up and get a jacket. Oh, close these doors. Oh, no, no, it's all right. It's probably just me. I'll, I'll be right down.
pulse, sir. Eh? Almost. Feel better? I felt all right this morning. You're the one who wasn't getting anywhere. Well, after a good lunch, we'll start over again. Shall I carry this? No, I've got it. Can you use a little of this too, ma'am? Oh, thank you. Still have some. Must be nice on the beach this morning. I guess I know what you mean, ma'am. I don't mean anything. They're down there, ma'am. Not only them, but Jim and Lee. Or what? Lee, dear. I didn't know I must. Hey, excuse me, then, ma'am. What time is it? Somebody give me a new watch, I might know. It's been two o'clock for four days now. Hi. Coming oh. up to lunch? No, thanks. I want to finish here. Hey, don't you think this would look better with a scallop? Oh, now, Doug, you leave her alone. It's her hedge. Yes, you tend to your own work. How's it going, by the way? Oh, I don't know what's the matter with me. Well, maybe you need a change. Enjoy some of this nice weather. Miriam must be getting awfully tired of it here. I was thinking, perhaps if you took a rest, it might do both of you good. Don't you think so, Miriam? All well, right, now. Come on, I know what she's up to. See you later. I detect a slight bum's rush. Sure there. you did. Every June it's the same. They want me to lay off so they can pack me off on picnics. Oh, Mr. Proctor, Hilda asked me to tell you lunch will be late. Okay, but tell her I'm hungry. Beg your pardon? She also asked me to tell you why. I don't care why. All right, why? She's had to spend most of the morning in Miss Blake's room. Seems to me, Mr. Proctor, with all the other things Hilda has to do here... Well, all I care is let's eat. Tell Hilda when we get it, it better be good. Doug, I want to... Did this thing call about my two time? Not yet, Mr. I can't work this afternoon without it. I'll let you know. Doug. Oh, what? It's just that... Hi. What are you two up to? Cuddlers. No, I really feel like Cinderella. Look, I have new slippers, too. Okay. I told you to leave it to Anne. And John says lunch will be late. Will you see what you can do? Yes, I will, Doug. Did you have an ice cream, Miriam? Oh, yes. Well, thanks. Anne, don't you think we'd better get the flowers now? Yes, of course. I'll get the best. Hilda, what are you griping about? I didn't ask you to clean up here today. I was under the impression you did, miss. Well, then get your impression straight. All I said was if you did clean up here... Miss Blake, I've always been very proud of my housekeeping, and I hope justly so. I trust now you won't find any dust in any corners. Will you please? I'm sorry, I'm busy. Why didn't you call me? I've been waiting for that turpentine for two days. I'll be right over. Can you imagine that at the station? Doug, I want to talk to you. Something's going on here, and I don't like There's it. There's nothing going on around here. No lunch, no work, no... Doug, have, have I hurt somebody's feelings? Look, Miriam, I'm sorry if I've been cross with you. It's just that... not you. Haven't you noticed how strange Lee is with me? And Hilda... How do you mean, strange? Well, Lee won't talk to me. When I speak to her, she runs away. Why don't you kiss and make up? But we haven't fought, Doug. It's just something that's come up all of a sudden. She probably just wants to play. She's on vacation now. Maybe your Aunt Martha's right. Maybe a change would do us good. You're doodling all the time anyway. And the cereal's certainly not getting anywhere. You need a bracer. Come with me to the station. I'll buy you one on the way back. Maybe that's it. How late is it? Huh? Oh. I know. Still two o'clock on that thing. Guess I will have to get you a new watch. And I told Miss Blake a thing or two. You know, Miss Proctor, I can't be in her room and in the kitchen, too. Ann, don't bother to fix anything for us. We'll have some lunch at the inn. Well, it's almost ready now, Doc. Well, I have to go to the station anyway. Want to come along? No. No, thank you. Well, see you later. Bye, Ann. Well, let me know when it's ready, Hilda. Uh, there's your vase, Evelyn. Poor Miss Proctor. You know, Miss Heath, I think I ought to tell you something. Yes?
Not a sign of them yet. I'd have the police out, that's what I'd do. How does? Well, just the same. All afternoon, and now, how long does a person have to put up with it? Come on, lovey, you never grow big if you don't eat. Maybe they had a flat tire. No, of course. They'll probably use that one. Well, I'm not going to stand for it for another minute. It's so quiet here, isn't it, Aunt Martha? Yes. After a while, you get so you wouldn't live any other place in the world. And yet you always feel the sea out there. Rough and cruel and mean. Well, in winter it is. I like it that way, though. I would like to hear it pounding. I like things to be like that. Things can't always be the same. Or people. Like Dan, I mean. He can be so fierce and stern one moment. And then when he smiles... <laughs> That's right. There. I think I'm pretty smart at alterations. Mind if I wash up in here? Of course not. and everything's ruined. How long am I supposed to hold it, Miss Proctor? I'm sorry, Hilda. I know it's difficult for you, but just a few more minutes, please. Didn't you telephone? All right. Go see if Aunt Martha and are ready. We'll be right down. Yes. What time is it now, John? And to be exact, it's 8.39, 59 one half seconds. Now say it 40. In Dublin's fair city, where girls are so pretty, twas there he first met her, sweet Polly Malone. Boy, wait till Aunt Susan. She ain't some for the bells. Two streets wide and narrow, crying cockles, muscles, the light. Let me carry him a while. Let's cook him first and surprise her with him for dinner. Maybe they've already eaten. Oh, it's not that late. Is it? It's two o'clock. No. It's two in the morning. It's two in the morning. Take shoes off. Let's play burglar. Take shoes off. 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 The dirty girl to bed, leaving all the lights on. Come on, dog. Let me in. Who's there? breakfast and all the lights on. I'll just speak to Ann about that. What does she think electricity grows on? Trees? Turn out that light. Turn out the light. Near Boston. Soap pictures, he says. I'll trade you soap pictures for drinks. <laughs> I bet we could travel from here across the United States. You drawing pictures <laughs> and me drinking. <laughs> Everybody doing up. Hilda. Hiya, honey. I 
downstairs and start serving dinner, please. We've got muscles for you. Alive, Hilda. Not me, Miss Proctor. I've served my last dinner in this house. Yep. Yeah. I'll get dinner on in. Douglas, we've been waiting dinner for a long time. You'd better hurry. You wave dinner till 2 o'clock in the morning for us. Better hurry. Fine couple of burglars we are. I'll be down on that. <laughs> Well, I'm terribly sorry. It'll be all right. Let's go on down. Anne, you're so right to close your eyes to us. I'll be right down. I had it just bursting my eyes. What are you looking so tragic for? I've rolled in like this before. I'd rather not discuss it now, Douglas. Morning will be all right. What's there to discuss? Plenty. But I'd rather wait. And did you ever feel off the beam? Remember when... I phoned the inn, but you weren't there. You had been there, though. Everybody seemed to know that. Well, that's why we left. We took a little drive to sober up. You did a fine job of it, didn't you? This isn't like you, Anne. What's the matter with you? Well, what do you think is the matter with me? Oh, Douglas, I tried to warn you the other day. I asked you, please, to... But you don't seem to care what other people think. I don't. All I care is what you think. Well, what do you expect me to think? I've tried desperately not to, but you keep... What? Is there anything between you and Miriam? You shouldn't have asked that, Anne. I am asking it. I wish you hadn't. Douglas! Miriam! Don't do that, please! Why not? It's what you wanted to know, isn't it? You asked it, you'll have the answer. I want my answer from you, Douglas. You're in such a state, if I told you no, you wouldn't believe me. Would you? I don't know. Let me know when you do. Of a month. Have some? So like that. What Anne just told me sobered me much quicker. <laughs> Mad, huh? Maybe she'll get over it. I've got it all straight in my mind. It was my fault. I didn't feel like working, and you were just being a gentleman, that's all. <laughs> well, if it's my fault, everything's all right, isn't it? It isn't just this afternoon, Miriam. Anne thinks something's been going on between you and me. I told you this morning that something was cooking around here, but you wouldn't listen. Where are you going? I've been accused before, but never by anyone like Anne. Anybody else, I don't give two cents. But Anne... How you feel when the door gets slammed in your face? Would you phone the station and get Mr. Blossom? I'm blowing. I can't blame you. For the road. And I hope it's a good road, kid. You know? Ah, 
Gosh, stop it. You're getting fat. I should have got rid of you a long time ago, anyway. Yeah, sure. Well, I guess this is it. I'll send you a postcard. I'm sorry, I'm late. I had a little poker game going on. Well, if you'll snap it up, you can get back to it. I need to come up and down, Miss Blake. So you're leaving kind of sudden, ain't you? Yeah, sure am. Douglas? Em? No, Douglas, it's me. Evelyn, do you want something? Why didn't you ring? No, I don't want anything. I thought I heard voices down here, and then I heard a car leave. Is anything wrong? No. Then why do you drink like that? When Papa drank, it made him unhappy. Maybe it began the other way. He was unhappy first. You weren't unhappy, Douglas. No, like a lark. You weren't unhappy this morning. Things haven't been right here for quite a while. It's nice of you to pretend you don't know, but you must have heard. Yes, Douglas. I tried to stop her. She didn't talk to you about it. Not exactly talk. But I've seen her watching me. It worried me because of Lee. Lee? You know how impressionable children are. I tried to keep her from finding it out. Anne's been so good know, to me. I don't know what's gotten into Anne. Oh, now I've only upset you more. Poor Douglas. You gotta get your sleep. I'm just sorry that you had to go through this. I hope it won't sour you on my life. Never, Douglas. If I ever get jealous of Dan, I'll never show it. I'm sure you won't. I can't even afford to be jealous with my heart. It must be hard to keep so calm, so peaceful. I have to be. To learn about peace. You know, lying awake nights, alone. Knowing it may come any moment. But it's helped being here. You know it has. You've done so much. Now I only wish I could help you and Anne to get back like you used to be. There's only some way of showing. I don't think there's anything you can do. But thanks. Good night. Douglas! She'll get over it if you give her time. But if you go in there now and quarrel... Oh, I guess you're right. And if I could help you out till you get another model. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't laugh when you drew this. I'm an idiot. What's the matter with me? Now I know why I've been sketching that face of yours. Why, Douglas? You just hurry up and get some beauty sleep. You've got a job starting tomorrow. Yes, Douglas. Jinx, I can't get it to come out right. You're wrong, Douglas. You mustn't be impatient. You'll get it soon, I know you will. Maybe so. Take that money of mine and you and Doug go off on a trip. That's what you need. No, darling, I'm afraid that wouldn't do it. Thanks, just the same. Anybody need a slightly handy man? Ernest. Good heavens, Ann. No hill to the yap at me, no John, no Lee to climb all over me. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh. Martha, look who's here. Well, Ernest, how nice. Oh. Hello, Martha. I still say, what is going on here? Oh, <laughs> just the summer doldrums, I guess. 
Well, anyway, that's what you get for walking in on a lady. I hope you appreciate that nice long letter that I wrote you. Oh, yes. And the P.S. It's a funny thing, isn't it, how everybody always puts the important things in the P.S. Oh, John Doe. Oh, I don't remember. P.S. By the way, Ernest, would you mind skipping this next weekend? Better still, wait until I write again. That was weeks ago. Anyway, you're here now. And you know we're always glad to have you. Some of us, anyway. Ann, do we have to beat this bird out of brush? I ran into Miriam yesterday. Oh, really? How is she? She told me the whole thing. Surely you can't believe Ernest, it. Ernest, I'd rather not talk about it. You don't have to. I want to talk about it. I... Ernest, I want my old job back. What do you say? I think it would be wonderful. For me, you'd turn your life upside down. Ernest is right. Well, you don't by any chance think my life is right side up now, do you? My husband drinks himself into a stupor every night. Doug drinking? Seriously? Quite. Since Miriam left, the only time he's sober is when he's at the church. At the church? <laughs> Doug? He's painting Evelyn as St. Cecilia. A donation. He's been at it for weeks. That's where they are now. Lovely, isn't it? To what extremes a guilty conscience will lead a man? So Evelyn has been a great help. Hmm? Well, except for that leader's job, that nearly drives me mad. Mommy, who's down there? Where are you, Lee? I'm up here, in Evelyn's room. Oh, oh, well, come down, dear. Ernest is here. Then, of course, there are the nightmares. She roused the whole household the other night with her screaming. Martha, your brother Ben only snored. What's my brother Ben got to do with it? Just an observation. What kind of nightmares? Well, well, Lee, dear, why did you get undressed? Mommy, could I have my dinner on a tray in Evelyn's room? Lee, aren't you going to say hello to me? Hello, Ernest. I don't feel very well. I feel weak. Lee, you know that's absolute nonsense. Besides, dear, we won't be having dinner for hours yet. I can hardly get my breath. Lee, please come down. I won't come down. I won't. Poor Mommy. I love you very much. All right, darling. I'll bring dinner up to you. Thank you, Mommy. Anne, how long has she been like that? Since the trouble about Miriam. Children sense those things. Oh, I've done everything to make her forget it in front of her. I've tried to be with Doug as I always was, but... Can't you see she's only aping Evelyn? Oh, she's just upset. Her father's away all the time. I'm gross and irritable. That's not it. She's turning neurotic, imitating an invalid. Oh, Ernest. Think back, Anne. When did things start going wrong around here? I don't know. I, I'm all mixed up. About two months ago. How long has Evelyn been here? Two months. Exactly. Your trouble didn't start with Miriam. It started the day you took that sick little, sweet little invalid into your hearts. Oh, but that's absurd. How could she be responsible for all this mess? No, I won't believe it. I can't. Well, my brother Ben managed it. He wasn't even able to get out of an invalid's chair. That's why I mentioned the dear departed before. Your brother Ben wasn't the only one who was paralyzed. He paralyzed you, kept you from marrying, living a life of your own. Sometimes sickness puts greatness into people. Sometimes it goes the other way. Persecution complex. The desire to control and destroy. And you've got to do something. Get her out of the house. Oh, Ernest, I can't. But I have a responsibility, Dan. Let me. And your I... only responsibility is towards your family. Well, let me take Evelyn for a while. If Ernest is wrong, there's no harm done. If he's right, we... Hello, Mr. Hatch. 
Packard. When did you cook? A little while ago. We didn't bring very nice weather. Where's Douglas? He's taking a walk on the beach. He's so upset. He's still not satisfied with the painting. Evelyn, wait a moment, please. You and Ernest go into the cottage. I'll phone you later. Don't be too long, Ann. Evelyn, won't you come and sit down? You're not too tired to talk a little bit, are you? No. A change of scene for a few weeks. Change of scene? Where? What do you mean? Aunt Martha's invited you to stay with her for a while. I'd rather not. Well, you'd be doing me a favor if you would. Lee hasn't been feeling very well, and I have all the housework to do. I don't ask you to wait on me. Of course you don't. I, I know that, Evelyn, but... Anyway, I'm not home very much. Practically the whole day at the church. That's another thing. I'm sorry to have to mention it, but... Douglas has to go back to his illustrating. We need the money. Why blame me for that? Is that how you're trying to get rid of me? Do someplace where you'll be comfortable. I'm comfortable here. I won't go to that hateful old woman, Evelyn. How can you talk that way about Aunt Martha? I know what you're trying to do. You want to get me away from Douglas. He comes to me when you've driven him half crazy. You hate me, don't you? You're jealous. Jealous? Of you? Yes. You're sending me away because you're jealous of me. Why should I be jealous? Because he prefers me to you? Because you've lost him? You nasty little fool. You're in love with my husband. He's not in love with you. He slept in the studio for weeks. You nag him. You quarrel with him all the time. Like this, don't do this, don't do that. You're even jealous of his painting. You hate because it's always been his dream. And now I'm a part of it. And I always will be. You're a little monster. You're going to get out of this house tonight. I'll bet I don't. Douglas, don't let her. She's going to get rid of me. And what have you done to her? She hates me. She said horrible things. What is it now, Anne? What have you said to her? Let me handle this, Douglas. I know what I'm doing. She said I was too much trouble. I try not to be any trouble. You know that. Aren't you ashamed? I want to speak to you alone, Doug. She called me a monster. Ask her if she didn't. And what have I done? What have I done? The girl's in love with you, Douglas. What's happened to you, Anne? First it was Miriam, now it's Evelyn. Why didn't you accuse Hilda? I didn't accuse anybody. She just admitted it. I told her I loved you. Of course I love you. Why shouldn't I? You've done everything for me. She hates me because you're painting me. She's jealous. Oh, why did Dad ever bring me here? Why? <laughs> Evelyn, go upstairs. Nobody can stand you away. Don't worry. <laughs> You see what you've done to her. She's not that sick. She's not so weak that she can't ruin our lives. I'd examine myself about that if I were you. Oh, I have. I was wrong about Miriam. I know that now. But you're not wrong about this. No, I'm not. Blaming someone else for your own mistakes is a shabby trick, Ian. Oh, Douglas, it isn't only us. She, she's having a dreadful effect on Lee, too. She's turning her into a neurotic. Douglas, can't you see she's dangerous? There's something terribly wrong with the girl. If you could have seen her face when I asked her to go to Aunt Martha, she, she called her a hateful old woman. Well, maybe she doesn't like Aunt Martha. What's that got to do with it? And then she accused me of being jealous of her. Well, aren't you? No. I, I'm only frightened, terribly frightened. Oh, Anne. Because you're so blind, Douglas. Don't you understand? She said she was in love with you. She said it in front of me. I never heard anything more innocent. You're hysterical, Anne. 
I can't stand by and see you wreck the life and health of a girl who hasn't done anything to you. Dan, I'll never forgive you for this, and neither will I. Douglas! Now what? Nothing. Your nerves are shot, Anne. You better hold up yourself. Seven, please. Uh, Martha, Ernest is right. He's like something out of a nightmare. I'm going away for a while and take Lee. Maybe Douglas will come to his senses. Let me speak to Ernest, please. Yes, Ernest. Call the station, please. Lights always go off. No, I'm not frightened. I like it like this. All the violence outside, and in here it's so still. But I was a little lonely. Where did you go? Back to the church. Look at the saint. What a masterpiece. You're not fair to yourself, Douglas. You haven't tried anything like that in a long time. You've got too much on your mind. Maybe so. I'm sorry about that scene this afternoon. Anne didn't mean it. Of course not. It was silly of me to go to pieces. But I can't bear to see anyone unhappy. I don't know what's got in there, everybody. Anne's on edge, Lee's sick, I can't paint. Something's wrong with everything. Not with me, Douglas, not anymore. I'm well now, strong. And just because I've, I've been so happy. You keep on being happy, infant. That's what you're here for. Anne upstairs? No. She's gone. Gone where? I don't know. Maybe she went to Aunt Martha. Yes, that's it. I remember now. I said some pretty brutal things this afternoon. You think I should call her? You can't call her. The phone's dead. It is, eh? Probably down. Poor 
poor duck. Nothing's right, is it? I'll get you a drink. You, Evelyn? I know. But you've had such a miserable day. I've never known anything like this. In the last few weeks, I've learned to know gentleness and beauty, even fun. The House of Proctor kind. House of Proctor. Dan told you we were a very unusual family. It's not the family, Douglas. Let me tell That's you. That's the look I've tried to paint. It's beautiful. I'll get it on canvas someday. I hope I can. You will, Douglas. You'll find your way back. Back to what? I'm all mixed up. This house used to be fun. There was a guy that liked life. You can love it now. Because you can do what you want with it. Simple as that. Of course, Douglas. There's nothing standing in your way. Dan, you know, but... No, it's you. No one else but you. You must know that. I sent him away for you. And I don't want him to ever come back again. Are you out of your mind? Don't look at me like that. You afraid Anne's coming back? She won't, because she's gone, too, for good. What are you talking about? It's true. She left with Ernest Tackett. This is our house now, yours and mine. Think what that means, Douglas. Every morning I can come downstairs and fix the flowers. And Hilda and John will be here, too. And they'll say, yes, Mrs. Proctor, to me, as they did to her. Evelyn! And there won't be any low, vulgar women in our house with their dirty desires. You can thank me and my love for you. You made me strong so I could be like this. Little Saint Cecilia. No wonder I couldn't paint a saint. Douglas, it's no use. She's gone for good with Ernest Hackett. Look. Goodbye, she said goodbye. Douglas, she's not worth it. She's not worth it. Get away from me. Go back to your room and stay there. No, Douglas, no. the train? Just pulled out, Mr. Proctor. God. Douglas. I'm glad you didn't go. I couldn't go. And I couldn't go back. I didn't know what to do, so I had Ernest go off. Something happened just now. I'm sorry I had to learn I was wrong from her. I wish I'd believed you. Oh, it doesn't matter, darling. So long as you know now. I love you. Oh, Douglas. I feel as if I've been on a long, long journey and just come home. She cried herself to sleep. She didn't understand. What are we going to do now? It's very simple. You had the right hunch. We'll get rid of her. But what about Dan? We'll explain to him later. It's our lives. Of course it is, only... Well, maybe we can make it easier for him. Let's see what we can figure out. We'd better take Lee to Aunt Martha's. There might be trouble tonight. All right, dear.
Douglas. I knew you'd come back. I knew it. I've been waiting for you. Evelyn, there isn't anything you can do anymore. We have quite a fair proposition to make to you. As your father's unable to take care of you, we've decided that we will. We'll send you somewhere, a sanitarium. I won't go to any hospital. Not a hospital. A place where you can live and have people to look after you. There's one near Boston. And we'll even go into Hawk to keep you there. But only on one condition. Are you listening to me, Evelyn? I'm listening. You'll write to Dan and tell him that you've gotten worse. And that you've decided you can't ever see him again. Because marriage would be impossible. And very gently, bit by bit, you'll break it to him that you're not in love with him anyway. Douglas. Let her go upstairs now. Will you do that, Evelyn? Just answer me. I won't ask you to give me your word. Are you through with me now? Yes. You'll write your letter first thing in the morning. I'll make sure it's mailed. I'll take her down there myself tomorrow. In the meantime, darling, I'd better stretch out down here. But why? What for? Just to be on the safe side. She's being a little too quiet for my liking. No telling what she might think of. Can't you get along without me for a while again? Well, it's only for a little while. Anyway, who do we think we are, honeymooners? Good night, Douglas. Come to think of it, that's not a bad idea. Go on a second honeymoon. Go back to Montreal. Montreal? It was good enough for the first one, why not the second? Uh, what scenery? Darling. We honeymooned in Quebec. distance, please. Operator, I want Baltimore. Dr. Dan Proctor. It's the Presbyterian Hospital. Did they catch all the other lights, honey? Mm-hmm. They must have been burning for hours. You could have gotten up and turned them off, you know. Who cares? Who cares about things like that anymore? Whoever cares? Darling. Why do you suppose we don't hear from her? Maybe if I took a frying pan with some bacon in it and waved it in front of the keyhole. No, she'd probably go on a hunger strike. <laughs> anyway, there's plenty of time to wake her before the train goes. Does Aunt Martha know it's all set for her to go? Mm-hmm. I called her. They're on their way up here now. Anne, let's not ever have anybody in the guest room again. Anyway, not for a long, long time. Mommy, look! Look, Daddy! What is it, Angel? We went to feed him. Oh, darling, what a shame. He's real dead. I touched him. Birds grow old, too, you know, like people. We've had Skipper a long while. You think that's it? I did feed him yesterday. Really, I did. Sure, Skipper probably just got tired of singing and went somewhere else. Anyway, he may even sing there, too, you don't know. And have you got a box or something? Yes, I think I can find something. Come on, Angel. We'll take him out and put him in the family plot next to Solomon. Next to the cat? Will he like that? I don't think you'll mind. Not now. There you are, darling. Thanks, you, Mother. Well, that's 
word Doug Solomon's great. Probably buries all his bones there, too. He likes slippers. That's enough. Now you go over there and lie down. You know, I don't think it'd be silly at all to say a prayer for Skipper. A prayer for yourself wouldn't hurt either. Why, Daddy? Don't you think you ought to ask forgiveness for hating people? You mean Miriam? Didn't Aunt Martha talk to you about it? Mm, she said Evelyn was going away and Miriam was coming back. And I must be nice to her. You will, won't you, darling? Sure I will. I'll be back later on. Where's that one? Why, Dan, she's upstairs. <laughs> What's wrong, Evelyn? You said that... I know, dear. I don't want to talk about it now. I wanted you to come for a more important reason. Then we can be married today. And I'll go back with you. We don't have to wait any longer. That's what I've been waiting for. Aren't you going to let them congratulate us? Well, you think it was a shock to someone. Aren't you happy for us? Martha. Why doesn't somebody say something? I'm sure Douglas will want to congratulate us, won't you? We're waiting, Douglas. What the devil is this all about? Evelyn. Are you sure you want to marry Dan? Is there any reason why I shouldn't? I'm sorry everyone is in such a strange mood this morning, darling. I wish you'd let me in on this. All right, Dan. But you won't like it. And it won't be easy on any of us. We didn't know exactly how to tell you. Maybe this will. You don't have to read it to me, Douglas. I know every word. I don't think you realize, Dan, this is Evelyn's diary. I know. She used to read it to me sometimes. You know the things she said in here about you? Yes. It doesn't make any difference, Doug. That's the way it is. But you don't know the things she said about me. June 14th. I love Douglas more and more. He's everything I ever wanted in a man. Yes, I wrote that, Dan. I told you there was a quarrel. That's what Anne and I quarreled about. But, Douglas, you didn't read the last page. I left it there so you could read it to Dan. I've been a fool. I thought I loved Douglas. But tonight I realize how wrong I was. I must go back to Dan and never leave him again. You don't believe that, Dan. Yes, I do. I'm through with the diary now, Douglas. I want you to keep it always, so that you'll never forget me. Evelyn. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I shouldn't have said that. But they've all been so horribly unkind and unfair. No, no Evelyn. We came pretty close, but you're jumping over. See you outside. I have a feeling, Evelyn, that we may not be coming back here. There are a few little things in my place I'd like to get to. As you like, dear. I'm sorry, Aunt Martha. You'd better hurry, dear. How can you do this to him? You can't really love him. It's odd how sure you can be of today. And so unsure of tomorrow. Today I love him very much. You'll be lonely for a while. You'll get used to it. 
I've been lonely all my life. Only one thing I regret. I would have liked this house. I'd pray for a little one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is what? Bird, it's not in the cage. Where is it? Lee let it out. In here? Yes. Yes. It was here just a moment ago. In this room? Where is it? Don't just stand there. Where? Do you see it? I'm not looking for it. I'm not afraid of birds. Be in there, too. Please, Aunt Viva, help me. Find it, find it. <laughs> 